Welcome to Beside the Burn for Wednesday the 26th of October and as we prepare to meet around the Lord's table on Sunday we're working our way through Revelation chapter 17 and 18 so that uh, on Sunday we get to chapter 19 and we encounter the wedding feast of the Lamb and For any wedding, there has to be a bride and we will discover that the church of Jesus Christ is prepared as a bride for Jesus. So whenever we trust in Jesus, we become part of his church and therefore we are his bride. But for anyone to commit to a a marriage, they have to forsake all others and love only one. And in chapter 17 and 18, we have this incredible character who's explained to us the prostitute Babylon, the prostitute sitting on the beast. And the idea of Babylon is to try and seduce us away from Christ, to try to pull our affections away from Christ so that we no longer want to marry him, but instead we are married to Babylon, the evil of this world. And that's what we're going to discover today in chapter 18. Again, don't worry about all the details and nuances that we'll read about here. Just look at the overall picture that's Babylon. We're being warned about Babylon trying to pull us away from Christ and yet our goal should be to be pure and spotless and ready for our marriage with Christ and that's what we think about as we come to the table on Sunday. So let's read together. After this I saw another angel coming down from heaven. He had great authority and the earth was illuminated by his splendour. With a mighty voice he shouted, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. She has become a dwelling for demons and a hunt for every impure spirit, a hunt for every unclean bird, a hunt for every unclean and detestable animal. So this is the great judgment that is coming as Jesus Christ returns and the angel declares what that judgment is going to be. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. This um, seductress is coming to an end. She is going to be able to uh, pull people away no longer. She is going to be destroyed and John is able to see this and hear um, this declaration that's made by the angel that the time for Babylon the Great is coming to an end. And she has attracted all these terrible things. Demons, impure spirits have all been drawn to her and she is going to be defeated. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulteries. The kings of the earth committed adultery with her and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. Verse 3 is just a description of today's world, isn't it? That all the nations have been seduced by Babylon and instead of being married to Christ, they have committed adultery with Babylon. And this is the seriousness of the situation that this language is used. Again, it's not the language we talk in polite conversation, but it clearly shows us how serious God is about us being faithful to him and having a relationship with him. If we go elsewhere, we are committing adultery. And the kings of the earth have committed adultery with her. In in other words, the leaders, those who are in power, have given themselves over to Babylon and the things of this world. They've forgotten about God. They're not interested in God's plan for this world. And again, we see that in the world today where our leaders have no interest in God, no thought of God. And there's a void in leadership 
in all levels of society where people do not care about God. And as we read on about the, the merchants here, they've made their money through dealing in the things of this world and again, no thought of God. Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues, for her sins are piled up to heaven and God has remembered her crimes. The angel is calling. There's this voice calling from heaven, calling us back to Christ again. Come out of her, my people. We cannot live in this world and, and follow the things of this world. Instead, we have to follow Christ. And there isn't an option here for us to, to sort of separate ourselves away. Instead, we're living here. We're, we're planted right here in this world. We're living in Babylon. So we can't separate ourselves from it, but we can be distinctive. We can make sure that we look different, that we are living our lives in a way that others will see that Christ is the one who is important to us. Verses 6 and 7, give back to her as she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done. This is the wisdom that we need to spot who she is and what she's been doing pour her a double portion from her own cup give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself in her heart she boasts so here we have Babylon that this great prostitute she doesn't realize or she doesn't want to admit that she's in trouble she doesn't maybe realize that this judgment is coming and she says I sit enthroned as queen I am not a widow I will never mourn she thinks that she's invincible because the beast has given her so much power but John is being told here that she will not last she cannot be trusted she cannot be relied upon because the judgment is coming. Therefore, in one day, her plagues will overtake her. Death, mourning and famine. She will be consumed by fire. For mighty is the Lord God who judges her. There are many in the world today who think the things of this world are what is important to us in our lives they think that it's the money and the power and the status that this world has that will help us in our lives but they forget that these things are going to be consumed by fire and that it's the lord god who is mighty and who judges us so let's pray together heavenly father help us to see this world for what it truly is Help us to recognise the evil that is all around us. And Lord, we pray that we would not be seduced by these things, that we would not commit adultery with this world, but instead, Lord, that we would repent and return to you and trust in you. Lord, help us to come out of her, to come out of this world and live distinctive lives so that we might bring glory to you. And Lord, this is our prayer as we prepare to come to your table on Sunday, that we would repent of our sin and open ourselves up to you to receive from you all that you have offered us. In Jesus' name, amen.